the heartbreaking story of two children and a devastating murder. Eric Smith and Derek Roby. In this murder case, a 13-year-old young, innocent-looking teenage boy inhumanly murdered a 4-year-old kid in a small village of Savoma in New York. This story made national headlines in 1993, and people were baffled by the idea that the innocent-looking kid would commit such a serious crime. But after the investigation, the jury unanimously found Smith guilty of second-degree murder. The story is not finished yet. 13 years old Eric, now approximately 44 years old, was released from jail in 2022. In this video, we will explain the horrific murder and sexual assault of Derek Roby, a four-year kid, by a young teenager Eric Smith. It's a scary murder story. Watch out and take care. Don't miss the end to know recent updates about the killer. Let's get started. On August 2, 1993, the little guy Derek Roby was excited to go to a summer camp and was conscious about running late. His mom was busy taking care of his baby brother, so he decided to go to the summer camp alone because it was near their house. He asked his mom to go by himself, and she let him go alone for the first time. Because the distance of the summer camp was very less, only 100 yards from their home, she gave him a goodbye kiss. Derek had not covered half of the distance to the summer camp when he was killed brutally. A 13-year-old teenager, Eric Smith, spotted a blonde boy walking alone in the street while riding his bicycle. Evil came into his mind, and he started luring the young four-year-old kid Derek to the woods. Derek, who was already anxious about being late, wanted to reach the summer camp earlier, and Eric promised him to show a shortcut. But Derek did not know that he would never reach his destination. He happily jumped and followed Eric to see the shortcut to summer camp. Instead, Eric took him to the side, where nobody could see them. He slowed down so that Derek could move ahead and he could grab him from behind. Eric tried to choke him from his back and push him to the ground. Lead investigator Charles Wood said that he killed him with two very large rocks and one smaller rock. He battered Derek with those rocks. After that, he went into Derek's lunch bag mashed banana, took Derek's Kool-Aid, and he poured that Kool-Aid into the wounds that the large rocks had made, and he sodomized Derek with a small stick that he had found. After killing the boy, he made a pose of the corpse, and nobody understands the logic of putting the shoes near the hands of Derek's dead body. He placed the left shoe near the right hand and the right shoe near the left hand. He enjoyed dealing with Derek's body, which is the most disturbing part. Derek's mom was content, knowing that Derek knew the way very well. But across 11 a.m., a storm broke out, and she started to worry about Derek. Because of the storm, the summer camp had been canceled, and Derek's mom was expecting her son at home. And that is the point where she started to search for her child. It was raining, and Doreen Roby raced to pick up Derek at the park. She said, I had an awful feeling. They told her that Derek never showed up. Searchers found his dead body nearly five hours later. Derek's body was lying in a small patch of woods near the same park. Evidence afterwards showed Derek was enticed to the woods before being choked and hammered with rocks. They found a smashed banana near his body, and his cool aid was poured into his wounds brutally. Firstly, people thought an adult had killed Derek Roby. After all, his body was lying near a busy road where any arbitrary outsider could have attacked him and escaped through an easy getaway afterward. Police searched for the killer on a large scale, thinking the killer must be an adult. Parents in Savona were worried about their children that day. 
they were worried about who could commit such a horrific crime. Police were searching for the possible suspects that could lead to an arrest. Eric and his mother went to the police station to help with the investigation three days after the murder. Eric said that he might know something, but he denied that he had seen Derek. Later that day, police again came to interview Derek, but he completely changed his statement and said he had seen him. The question arises, why did Eric not confess his crime out of guilt on the same day? Rather, he pretended that everything was okay. He made such a brutal killing and then played with the corpse of an innocent four years old kid. Back to the story, police asked Eric where he saw Derek that day, and he said he saw him across the street while riding his bike. Eric said that the kid was near the wood patch at that time, the same patch of woods where Derek's body was found. He described Derek's t-shirt and lunch bag accurately. After listening to Eric's statements, the investigators believed that Eric knew something about the murder. As Eric described the details of the lunchbox and the shirt, investigators told him to give a trial at the location where he had seen Derek Roby from the bicycle to reenact that moment. Eric was also videotaped while recreating the moment. But when he rode his bike, the distance was far to see the details he described earlier. Now the police and Eric's family knew that he had seen something that he was not informing them about. After further investigations on August 8, 1993, Eric Smith confessed that he committed the murder. Eric's family begged him to tell them what he had seen. Eric Smith's grandfather said he said to his mom, I'm sorry, mom, I'm sorry, I killed that little boy. Later, he confessed to law enforcement and told them how he killed the four-year-old. On August 9, 1993, Eric was arrested for murder and became a national media sensation. A grand jury indicted 13-year-old Eric Smith on a second-degree murder charge. Eric Smith pleaded not guilty to the second-degree murder charge on September 10, 1993. A year after he committed the crime, he faced the jury under the glare of cameras. Smith's defense attorney argued that Smith had a mental disorder in which he could not control his anger. He revealed that he had a history of throwing temper tantrums. Also, Smith confessed that he was bullied at the school and was full of anger that day. The prosecutor pushed back against the nonsense defense, claiming that Smith understood what he was doing was immoral and should be held fully accountable for his actions under the law. In August 1994, Smith, now 14, was tried as an adult and sentenced to nine years to life in prison. Smith was held in a juvenile detention center and transferred to a prison for adults after he turned 21. Almost nine years after his crime, Smith had his first parole hearing. His parole was denied, but Smith would have more opportunities for parole every two years for nearly two decades. It was a recurring nightmare for the Roby family. It upsets me, the fact that we have to beg to keep this killer behind bars, Doreen Roby said. They could decide that well. Now he's done his time, and we're going to let him go. It scares the hell out of me. Over the years, Smith spoke out about his experience. In 2004, Smith, then 24 years old, told 48 Hours that he had killed Derek Roby after years of being relentlessly bullied by other kids. John Tunney, who prosecuted Smith, told 48 Hours, contributor Jim Axelrod. What I do believe is that Eric was tired of being the victim in his mind, and he wanted to see what it felt like to be the victimizer. CBS News and Winnie TV interviewed Eric Smith when he was almost 30 years old, and he said his anger at the murder wasn't directed towards Derek at all, but rather it was mandated at the type of boys who used to mock him. I viewed life in a very dark manner. I couldn't carry the pain and anguish that I felt anymore. I rode my bike around, and I seen Derek. I can take my anger out on him. In the whole interview, Smith continuously expressed guilt for his actions. He also said, if I could switch places with him and take the grave for him to live, I'd do it in a second, but we all know that it is not possible. On October 5, 2021, 
He said in the 11th parole board hearing that he fell in love with a lawyer over time. He said he wanted to marry and pursue an electrician or carpentry as his profession. After listening to the release plan, having a clean disciplinary record, and a low score on his risk assessment, he was granted parole. After 28 years of lockup, he was released from prison after finding approved housing for him in Queen London. But the question is if he is guilty of what he did in the past as a teenager. What if he does the same thing again? Because this world is full of bullying. After his release, he is being closely monitored and cannot leave New York under any circumstances. Now we have come to the end of the story. Dale and Doreen Roby still celebrate their son's memory. Also, they helped open a new basketball field in their community in Derek's memory. What do you think about the decision to release Eric? Tell us in the comment section below. Also, if you want to listen to more crime stories, subscribe to our channel and give us a thumbs up. Don't forget to press the bell icon. See you in the next video. Till then, take care.